Before we do anything, I need a moment of silence for my wife, Zoe Kravitz. Why are we A, <laughs> you said she's your wife, B, moment of silence. For how fine I she is. I, I, need, I, just, I, needed, I needed time to process how fine she was in this movie in totality. I, I don't think you apply moment of silence correctly. Hey, 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 don't question me. We good. We good. <laughs> I got my time in. Condolences to a person that's doing it. Well. Well, condol- I, I didn't say condolences. I needed 10 seconds of silence to acknowledge how bad she was. We're here to talk about the Batman, guys. Yes. We just got done with our live show where we kind of gave our initial thoughts on it. But right now, we're about to get to this is spoiler. Spoiler alert. We're doing spoilers for this. If you haven't seen the movie yet and you watch this video, leave, come back, like, share, and subscribe, and then watch the whole video. Getting into it. We'll start with uh because we kind of got we got a lot of stuff during the live show. General thoughts. We'll go back into general thoughts again. Otis, we'll start with you. So, first of all, his armor was ridiculous, right? It stops, pistol fire, automatic rifle fire, shotgun fire, sniper rifle fire. Like, what does that, right? Like, what is what is it made out of that? Like, you can take a shotgun shot like at point blank range, and like just like I mean, he flew like he. He he fell, but like he was good. It's like shit, you know. I'm gonna hang from this ledge for like 45 seconds after taking a shotgun blast to the chest, point blank. Right. We talked yeah. about. I think you had a whole point about how slow he was moving throughout this movie. Um, and my whole point was like this suit was just heavy as hell. Like even when you look at it, I will say this: the fight choreography in this was amazing because there were no cuts. Everything was straight one takes like you saw. I don't know. If, I don't even know where Pattinson had time to get into a stunt double or if he did his own stunts. It looked like he did his own stunts because I saw like no cuts that allowed him time to get like a stunt double put in there because the, it was all. And I will say that as far as the suit being heavy, the combat was really upper body and mm-hmm. all like I almost like Pac-Man, which we talked about for the um, the Sifu video and which is all like counters and upper body counters and shit mm-hmm. like that. And he's brutal on the kind like, he's punching dudes out. He's doing. It's dope. It's dope. The guy just seen like crazy. Somebody. A couple. Like, oh. I'm pretty sure he did a couple times. I knew that end fight where people was throwing people yeah. off that ledge. Either they yeah. got whiplash from like yeah. being just dropped on their neck, or he actually they just fell all the way down. So I'm pretty sure somebody died. I mean, like, just... The building that they landed down at the bottom end was flooded. There's electricity running through that water. It's not like they got up after like they fell. So like they're probably dead, right? They're they're probably gone. So, so a couple, a couple, a couple quick things. First off, <laughs> Batman <laughs> is here. Batman is here. I don't oh, give a man. damn what Otis is saying about talking about the outfit. Dev and his wife Zoe Kravitz. Congratulations, not condolences. Congratulations Thank on you. your nuptials, sir. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. The Batman armor is basically based clearly off of the Arkham games. I'm not sure why it's so extremely Teflon, Don, and durable, but it apparently is. If you're a multi-billionaire and you spend all your money on making it over two years, I guess you can find a way to do that. Tanks it ain't perfect. Are less it's less durable than that armor, right? Like, yes, it's extremely durable. Now you asked me about the guys that you thought may have gotten killed. The water, the electricity didn't get the electricity didn't get to the water until uh, the wire came through. And as soon as it came through, Batman jumped on it and cut it. And nice. even after that, when he went down with the wire, you right. saw him, he, you saw him land in the water. He didn't get electrocuted either. I'm not talking so about the electrocution. I'm talking about the blunt force trauma of you falling like three stories up on your head in the water. Right. I mean, they, might, they might have. I, they just, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. We, we actually didn't see any of them actually fall into the water or fall off. I'm not sure where they went. I'm not sure what happened to them. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I also don't care. Um, it, 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 here's what they did do they made it clear that Batman there's a part where it shows him hook them and kind of swing them around the side of the um, like back over 
the, that big huge like skybox thing almost like they're like they're back on top of it again if they survive that if they didn't i'm not mm-hmm. sure they may have gotten messed up in the comic books there's all kinds of times you see Batman put people in traction. It happens a lot. Mm-hmm. The Joker's mouth in the comic books, it's lower where he has a messed up jaw and, and teeth because he's been punched mm-hmm. so much by Batman. So it's not like he's a, a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He has some yeah. dudes left and right. Uh, case number two. Woo, this movie's great. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Otis had to come here with a lot of shade. A lot of shade. The shadiest shade you ever shaded. He wouldn't be Otis redoing the light. <laughs> brightness and happiness and sunshine rainbow skittle let's try to put some sort of a format to this discussion let's try, let's try. so story let's start with oh. the story and how the story went i felt like this plot line of the story was very much so um a compilation of a lot of different batman stories and versions i saw some of the if you guys have played the telltale batman series they took a lot of the plot from that and put it in here even near the end part when Batman and uh, Selena were like going their separate ways on motorcycles, that's like a direct fuck. I don't know if it's from the comic. It, they may have gotten the, that part of the game may come from the comic, but it's my first time seeing it was in that game where they literally on motorcycles and went their separate ways and kind of saw each other in the rearview mirror. There's like a direct copy paste shot. Um, so they, they took a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places. So Matt Reeves and the people that directed and wrote, uh, people that wrote this script did their homework, and I can't thank them, thank them more for that. That was. As a fan, it makes me happy that you took effort into making this. I know that Reeves and his writing partner started on this in 2017. They rejected the script that that Warner Brothers sent them. They said, he said, I can't do this. This won't work. And they said, well, what's your idea? And, he, and they worked on this. It took them, like, I guess, five years to make this, essentially. And it, and it shows. So they obviously mined from like books like Hush. Um, obviously, Long Halloween is a big part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the other other Batman stories of, of, from from the lore mm-hmm. and uh, apparently the Telltale game as well. Even the Arkham games for his armor, Arkham Knight, especially he put all these different elements in there. And they clearly they clearly love the character almost as much as I do. Honestly, like when it comes to the story itself, I feel like this is a more streamlined version of the the animated Hush that came out uh, not too long ago on. Um, uh for through dc uh, yeah the one where the render um, was hush mm-hmm. which yeah. is like this feel this oh, feel yeah. a whole lot like that but in a much better done fashion like, yeah that one pissed me yeah, off yeah, yeah that one uh we're not gonna talk about that it feels like they took a lot of that changed the 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 time of when it happened essentially like you know incorporated into a younger batman in that first meeting of selena kyle but like yeah a lot of their interactions with each other with Selena and, and Batman like I felt like the dialogue was taken straight from that iteration of Hush mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. yeah because that's where they actually kind of the first time in a way fall in love is in Hush mm-hmm. which is right. 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 a very recent fairly recent story All Right. and I will say in regards to the story and that, that compilation of different Batman stories I talked about it during the live show we talked uh, we had earlier I couldn't really guess or predict where this plot was going I had points and where I thought I knew where it was going, but they wrote it so well to where they were interested, like they, in that cutscene where they were breaking down what actually happened with Thomas Wayne and how he paid off the, that um, reporter killed, they showed Edward Elliot, they showed uh, Tommy Elliot's father in that. So I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, so it'll be like, a, it's gonna be hushed. They're gonna have, hush, yeah. Tommy's gonna be the Riddler again, like the like what we talked about before, but then they kind of had him be Edward Nash they didn't really do the Edward Nigma thing. Mm-hmm. thing. So um, it was weird. Yeah, they, they they threw it together. Also, I thought Selena's story, I thought her backstory would be akin to Huntress. Once they, uh, they revealed the fact that Carmine Falcone was her father. Yeah, okay. Yeah, was her dad, Before yeah. they revealed that he was her father, I assumed it would be a thing where Falcone killed her parents. Like she was like, she. they just took the Huntress's backstory and put it on Selena. I'm like, all right, that's cool. That's what they're doing. And then they made him her father. I was like, oh shit, I had to do that out the that's, window. Hmm. I didn't know where they were going with that. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad they didn't just throw Huntress's uh, Helen, Helena's story onto mm-hmm. onto Catwoman. They actually gave her a different kind of because also I, the idea is that I want them to leave a door open for them to do Huntress later on or whatnot. But I like the idea of her her being different, her being her own person, her having her own mm-hmm. story, uh, and she being an orphan and everything. I like I liked how they portrayed Selena and that she would be essentially the opposite. She's there's so much that her and Batman have in common with them being kind of on their own since they were kids. But at the same time. She actually wants to kill her father. Mm-hmm. Batman 
would do anything to have his, his dad back. Mm -hmm. uh, and they both right. find out big secrets about their dads. Batman finding out that his dad, as good as he was, there was a little bit of shade, a little, little bit of dirt there under his nails. Not a lot, but there's some here and there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Catwoman, her, you know, her dad being a monster that did all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's yeah, it's a, it's a lot there to mind. It's a lot there to mind. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I love the fact that there were so many things going on for Batman to have to handle. Like, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with the Falcons, dealing with the Riddler, dealing with the regular crime on the streets, dealing with the relationship that he was having with uh, the police, dealing with Selena's thing. Like, this dealing felt with, like... It's probably figure in the hospital. Right. Dealing with uh, Alfred in the hospital because of the Riddler. Like, this right. This felt like a Batman thing. It's like, yeah, all the, this is Gotham for Batman. This is what this you... Is Gotham. Yeah. Right. In regards to some of the again, getting into some of the characters, uh, Penguin, I thought that this edition of the Penguin was great. Um, right. It's very, it's very akin right. to how they did Gotham. If you guys have watched Gotham, I love Gotham. I watched the whole series, even except for that last episode. I wanted to I, I anyway. Know. I wanted to punch a hole in the wall. Couldn't make it past three, please. I enjoyed the series, but in that, okay. in that, in this way, way in that series, the same way in that series. They did an amazing job of showing the ascension of the penguin into being the top member of the crime family and how he was i think in that one he was an underling of jada pickett's character mm -hmm. mooney or some fish like, mooney fish, fish mooney or whatever but that's her name that's her name folks fish mm -hmm. mooney yeah well that's, i think it's actually isn't that an actual character in the comics or, doesn't matter uh, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> anyway getting anyway getting to, the actual point was that show did a great job of showing the ascension of the penguin and i think they really Again, they it felt I don't know if they did this on purpose, but it feels like they were watching and taking part of any and every Batman media or story they could find and like implementing that in this movie. Because you can find something in this movie and be like, oh, that's from mm -hmm. this, that came so, from that, and that and that and that. That's the, um, they they clearly absorbed multiple mediums of Batman, didn't yeah, right. take from one specifically, and I do appreciate that. All the Snyderverse fans saying bring back the Snyderverse, I don't want them to do that. And part of least because Zack Snyder made some made a bunch of comments talking about Batman in particular. One was, of course, is him that how Batman wouldn't care about killing folks, how real heroes wouldn't wouldn't bother. There are no real heroes, and people, of course, you have to use guns. You're an idiot if you think this. I mean, I'm I'm quoting Zack Snyder. You're basically an idiot if you think you can go out in the streets and fight and not use guns. And this movie shows multiple times Batman not using guns, but it also shows shows that the writers um, and director clearly understood the character and how it's an important part for him not to use guns, but more importantly, they respected the lore of, of the character, what made him what tick, essentially. You forget the important part, though. The big thing that Snyder said about Batman, you wanted Batman to get ranked in prison. Yeah, right. That was another. Yeah. 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 He wanted it to be that dark. I'm like, oh, okay. The uh, two aspects of this movie that I wanted to get into is regards to the realism one. Um, I felt as though this was even more grounded in realism than the actual bail stuff, because when, especially the biggest part is regards to his cape. In my mind, I'm trying to figure out as I'm watching the movie. How are they going to utilize him flying? Is this cape going to be similar to the Bale one where it's like magnetized or whatever he's just using it as a glider? When I saw that it like turned into a squirrel suit, I'm like, oh shit. I really like that they did that, but I don't like it aesthetically because I really enjoyed the whole bat shape. That's just a personal thing with me. I enjoyed the bat shape cape or whatever, but I thought it was really great and well written that they were able to you make the cape make sense in realism. Right. Like it's like a squirrel suit. Um, I, I, I like that too. What I, one thing I like too is it seemed like, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, when he went up there, we have to get into that whole scene, because like, I love that scene to begin with, mm -hmm. but when he's up there, he looks afraid the first mm -hmm. time in the movie. He's mm -hmm. like, I am scared. He's like, I gotta jump way. off this? I gotta jump off this. I gotta jump off this. And it, I would imagine this is probably maybe, if not his maiden voyage with this suit, it's probably the first time he, he said he used it at a height this high, and he's not really comfortable doing it. So mm -hmm. he so he zips himself up and he's like, kind of uh, here we go. And it, 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 it'll probably get refined. It has to get refined because it's mm -hmm. it was a that was a rough rough flight and a rough yeah, landing. Didn't crash. Yeah, it was, it was not. It was that did not go. It not his plan. He was not. He was not well after that. Uh, so it, it's I like that it's made to almost look extra crude because it's going to get refined and polished more. Probably right. if the movies go on. That's what I'm excited for for the next one is seeing how he improves upon all his gear. 
how did he survive a car crash without a car? Um, he like he, <laughs> he hit the ground so hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. granted, so I will say it, the impact was kind of slowed down because the parachute hit the bridge or whatever, and then he yeah. rolled off the truck, bounced off. Yeah, the, yeah, that nurse got slowed down a little bit. Yeah, and it was it was brutal. But, but again, if if it, if it can stop bullets, it can definitely help you with the landing on the street. Yeah, that shit was right. so thick. I mean, but it's still like okay, he's heavier. Like he's he's literally in a literal suit of armor with the full momentum of jumping off of a building, right? <clears throat> like and gliding through the city for a point in time, slingshotting from the 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 parachute into a truck and then landing on the ground. He should have yeah. been roll killed there. I'm just yeah. saying. Like, it's uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to take you. I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot to take you in. But uh, it's uh, but again, with no head support. Like I don't it could have been that. thick, bro. There's no way you have a bulletproof everything and right. then just rubber here. Yeah, it's now, it, 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 him it. take it off. It was like it was it's gotta be rubber. some kind of special. No, he, material, he, he did right. this. He did this. It's always this. Hmm. It's it's one piece. That the cow is one right. piece. Right. Right. Yeah. But I mean, that's again. I don't know the details. I'm just uh, and you're not you're not wrong. Mm. It's just that I'm still fully erect for the movie. Hey, yo, what that's the all. fuck? Let's, let's use some protection here. Uh, yeah. just, just quickly, just <laughs> I'm, just, I'm wearing a condom. I'm wearing a condom. At all times. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> thing, really, I'm allegedly wearing a condom. Oh, God. <laughs> it felt another, again, it came directly out of the Batman Begins. I think it was Batman Begins, right? In which he was running from the cops, but I think in that Batman Begins movie, he hit the bats flying up or whatever when he was going. Right. Through, that, so he wasn't running from the cops there. He was running in, he was in Arkham. Right. He's running down Arkham in the in the uh, yeah I know the scene you're talking about wasn't he running he was right. just running in Arkham right in the I back. thought cops were chasing him in Arkham I thought right were they I could be wrong I could be mm. wrong I know he was running but I don't think he was being chased at that point by cops I don't think the cops the cops I feel like were chasing him only in the on the streets and cars it was the whole chase in the well Batman it was there. the scene because it was a scene where he was running from cops and he was he got to the top of the building and he had to um, throw the little bat sonar thing out that drew that drew all the bats to him. And he mm-hmm. flew up there and then flew out. Hey, hey, so with the sonar, then he drops it. He drops it down. Yeah, and it follows him up. Yeah, that, so that I don't think he had time to. He's being pursued or chased from to stop and drop something and wait patiently. Yeah, I'll put the scene in post. We'll figure. We'll see. Yeah, we'll more. figure. We'll yeah. figure it out. But uh, I, I can't yeah. quite remember it either. So yeah, you're but yeah, there the, again another homage to just other Batman content that paved the way. Well, that, that was from Batman Year One. That was the Batman, the, the comic book originally. Because Batman right. Begins was, re- was referring to Batman Year One, the comic book, where Batman mm-hmm. does that under a flight of stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to hit the realism again, I felt like all the gadgets in this were so based on realism also. Even the most advanced thing, I'd probably say, were the, the eye contacts that were cameras. Those were fantastic. That was, that was they were, yeah, that was advanced. It was really dope, but also I could see that being something that's around now almost. I think, aren't they working on like... Yeah. I think Google's working on some kind of technology with that, like that, like a phone yeah, and shit now. Around now. Right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Google everything, Glass. everything was based in realism. Yeah. And also, and I like how it was. It was, away it was from the un- way. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you go. You go. No, I was like the contacts. Even though they they were really cool, they were a little unpolished. Like he had to like refine them. He had to like find mm-hmm. the like, frequencies for them. They were easy to get kind of scratched. It, it wasn't always perfect. They, the, it was it was amazing how they did it. It's it was like, makeshift, and you see that you can tell. They they made multiple things in this movie to let you know that this is not the final form of Batman. This is a very Batman in development. Right? Yes, so yeah, and, and take I love away that. from the realism that that Dev is talking about. Like there are multiple scenes where Batman was completely surrounded surrounded by armed assailants. Multiple scenes, right? No one aimed at his chin. No one. <laughs> <laughs> he, he will not let that go. Let's let's listen to this in the bud. How easy is it to aim at somebody when they're punch, like, trying to punch you in the face? He's already moving around, and you're trying not to shoot your friend. So you're trying to shoot him. Your friend is already buddy. getting beat into the ground brutally, right? Your his face is broken. He's down. Just just take the shotgun that you're holding and put it to his chin and into Batman. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I don't, I never, I don't, we don't ever do crime together because you just like you know, shoot in my direction regardless. No, fuck that. You don't like, shoot in my direction. I'm gonna you, it, is, it is okay, a you want me to cannon. stop? You want me to is, let him It is cannon you that Otis will people. abandon us in the zombie apocalypse. I refuse I to get into a, a fight against a vigilante with Otis either. He will, he will throw me at the vigilante first. So I, 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 you wouldn't hesitate if he's beating, if he's punching me in and I'm 
Okay. No, if he's are. punching people <laughs> on the ground like he did multiple times to multiple people in this movie, I'm gonna walk up to him with a shotty and you know let it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I, I think one thing we have to remember too is so I it, I noticed in the fights because a lot of them are using melee weapons and things like that, which is funny because one of my the things I hate most in movies is when they give guys not just god armor, which, which Otis has a problem with, but they give them like kind of like they're so perfect they can't be touched in a fight. He gets hit a lot in the movie. They, they lay him blows on him. And they do hit him in the head with these pipes and stuff. He gets hit in the head a bunch. You even see that he has scuffs marks on his head a bunch of the time, too. Right. So he's getting hit in the head. That's happening. That is definitely happening. Right. He may not be getting shot in the face, but I imagine in the heat of battle, you trying to aim your weapon specifically at a person's face isn't as easy it might, as it might seem. I'm not saying it's face. easy, but like there are literal snipers in this movie that he fights, right? Like... Yeah, fight multiple There's snipers. guys with sniper rifles, but they, they have, have they have sniper rifles, but he's like yeah. at point blank range. Whoever killed at Falcon them. was a sniper, like a sniper. That sniper. was the Riddler himself, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but he wasn't shooting at Batman. He wasn't he shooting was, at Batman. He, yeah, he was trying to Batman. kill Batman. He was trying to yeah, kill he wanted Batman to come and he was had a few fan fanboy on Batman. Which Jeez, is Batman. another part of the fucking yeah. plot that the Riddler set all that up. Like mm -hmm. when he killed him, and it's so like bringing bringing the rat into the light a lot. I'm like. Oh my fucking god! He yeah. set this shit up from the beginning, beginning. I, I mean, but the thing is, that was, was like, so that was so obvious to me. La Rata would wink like, uh, so bat. It's talking about a fucking bat. This is a trap set for Batman. This is so obvious to me. It was like, why is this even like? Why do you need steps to this? He's not talking about a a, a pigeon. He's not talking about a. Uh, what well, he wasn't talking about Batman. He was talking about Batman. He was talking he about talking about Batman. You know that. <laughs> It, that was for Batman. Like no, he was saying bring the wings. rat into the. A few moments later, the, the whole thing about a rat with wings. That was clearly a message for Batman. Like that was talking about Batman. Like that was very, very blatant to me. But they didn't really talk about that until the very end of it. it was like, no, the riddle. The riddle said riddle. that to bring the rat with wings yeah. into the light. Like it was. I'm not talking about that riddle. An hour later. What is it? What is? What was the exact? Uh, rat rat, rat, rat Tata. Yeah, like, right, yeah. Right. Ella, no. Ella, la, la, ta, ta. Uh, the only reason like, I'm denying no. that is because all these <laughs> messages are to Batman telling Batman to do something. Mm. It'd be kind of mm. weird to be like, hey, bring yourself into the light. I, I felt like he was and, saying, and bring, him at, hey, bring him. That's why even at the end when he was talking to him in the cell, he's like, oh, thanks for working with me on this. Like, you brought mm. him where, like, where right. I asked you to bring him to. Right. Yeah. He was referring yeah, to Falcon. That, that may be a little confusing then. That, and that's, that's something we can kind of. Uh, figure out or dig into but um I, I and i think it's a, in a three hour movie a three hour noir detective movie they're gonna be it deserves a re rewatch it's a mm -hmm. lot to digest so a rewatch could definitely help with that but for the most part what's funny is how so many of it was we were able to follow it i, I saw it with two friends and one of them she only watched the movie like once a year and she actually all for all three hours she was engrossed and engaged and she was able to follow what was happening what was unfolding for as dense a movie as this was with all kinds of twists and turns and stuff, it's still the mm -hmm. casual layperson able to follow it, uh, Batman fan or not. So I, um, even though they may have some parts that are a little twisted and, and confusing or whatnot, or maybe some parts that are a little, little uh, as Otis can, maybe he could understand or, or um, predict what's going to happen, mm -hmm. I still feel like it was very well handled over oh, yeah. the board. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a simple enough riddle that... You can see it as like you know in the movie, but it doesn't hurt the movie. Like you, you knew this was a, a thing for Batman. This is a stage set for Batman yeah. to have to sink or swim, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But there was nothing that's like it, there was no like blatantly obvious thing to allude to what how, how the plot of the story was going to go. And I appreciated that. Yeah. The only thing I don't know how I feel about yet is the fact that the, somebody knows his identity so early on. They don't. I'm like, well, the really knows his identity, didn't it? No, right. that was the thing. He doesn't. Remember, it seemed that way. Ha 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 ha. Wait, you're right. Because he said he said nothing to kill Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're the movie right, sets right, it up where you think, and there's a moment where Batman thinks for a while, oh shit, he knows exactly who I am. Look at the camera. He's right. like, I'm fucked. I right. am really bad. And then clearly he does. He doesn't, he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't. He actually wants really it. He literally starts yelling, Bruce. Bruce, yeah. Bruce, Bruce. Which that's yeah. one part about the Riddler that kind of irritated me a little bit. Like the, the screaming thing was cool at first. But it got really excessive with him just yeah, like yeah, yelling and screaming. I'm like, I get you're crazy. I get it. I get it. I understand. You gotta I've seen like people kind of like the Riddler in real life. So like his character did make sense to me because I've seen 
people that kind of act to that degree not to, not nowhere near to that extremity of course like i don't know jigsaw for, any, for but, anybody that doesn't know he's talking about the crackheads in chicago when he would go get food and walk home from school go to get food get yeah anyway uh, <laughs> i've seen people that are that that far gone so his character it made sense to me like i, I it, I it, it, it. Yeah, I, I, I'm with. I'm kind of with both of y'all. I see what you're saying, Deb, and that it was extra. But you're right, Otis. That's real. When you have a breakdown, if a person that's already has a psychological issue has a breakdown, especially with someone they've been idolizing for so long, uh, that happens a lot here in Hollywood, where people are like are super duper stalkers or whatnot, or they're obsessed with people. There's that famous video of the guy losing his mind about about Britney Spears, He's like leave Britney alone. So yeah. people do have when they have breakdowns, they they pretty much throw tantrums like Paul Dano did in a cell. However, it could be seen as extra. We uh, may not want that. However, what's funny too, however, again, throughout the movie, you're seeing him have like weird outburst on camera. So it wasn't like it was out of nowhere. He's clearly unhinged, much more so than like Edward Nigma and other iterations. Right. Let me rephrase uh, this. It, those were fine with me. It was at the end where he's screaming for like 15 seconds. Yeah. Where it was like the excess, like the long drawn out screams. And I'm like, yeah. You look so cold and calculated with ticks before. Now it just seems like you're crazy, crazy. Now. Yeah. yeah, I never, I never took it as calculated though, because like even like like he was saying like through the videos that he's seen, he was already unhinged even in those. Just like, oh okay, like he 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 even he even snapped out of his rocker. Like he's not 100 percent put together. Like I mean, it's impressive the schemes that he put together in the state that he was in. Mm -hmm. But he was clearly in the state where he was just like not grounded at right. all anymore. So my favorite character outside of maybe even more so than Batman, I got to go to it is, of course, Jeffrey Wright's Jim Gordon. We discussed mm -hmm. briefly or a little bit in our non-spoiler talk. I loved how Wright's portrayal of Gordon was a beleaguered cop in a world of corruption trying to do right. There's even a line where where Gordon says, like, uh, why isn't the Riddler after me? And Batman says, because you're not corrupt. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like, even the Riddler's like, yeah, I can't go after this guy. He's he's a yeah, good dude. <laughs> you know, he's, he's actually a good dude. And I, I love that it shows actual real, genuine partnership and friendship these two have with each other. There's a, uh, My favorite scene in the movie is when they're in their cell after Batman gets not knocked out, clean shaven chin, and they're in the cell. They're basically in that uh, the uh, interrogation room. Interrogation, big mm -hmm. interrogation room. All the cops, and, and clearly, it's clear all the cops, or at least ninety-nine percent of the cops, hate Batman. And Gordon's only standing up for him. And uh, and and there's a part where everyone's kind of turning on Batman, and 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 then Gordon's like uh, talks to him, and Batman says, "You too." And it kind of, and you see a moment, a, a brief moment where Batman feels like he's been his best friend has betrayed him in a sense, mm -hmm. and then Gordon you know, kind of whispers to him like, you know, I, I, uh, you know, you know the only, you, you know, you're the only one I trust, essentially. So it's like right. it's just these two versus the world, right? right. And, like, and, then, and then Gordon says, "We have to get you out of here, not you have to get out of here." He says, "We have to get you out of here." Right. And I, I love the idea that it's that that much like a roller die, you know, ride or die partner that Batman actually has. So. All right. To, to expound upon that point really briefly. Um, in that same scene or like a little bit later on in that scene where they see the one cop that was a bouncer at the um at the iceberg lounge yeah. and batman's like oh i saw him there he's like he's working there too he's corrupt too like he was just it felt like somebody that's so pure being surprised that everybody like the world's yeah. Yeah, yeah, everybody. It, it, was, it was it was it was great to see that yeah. that scene jim be the quintessential like when you think of a cop this is who you're supposed to think of as jim gordon to speak on that same scene so you mean to tell me they took Batman from one part of the city all the way to this precinct and nobody took off his mask? I knew you were going to say that. I knew right, you were going right. to say that. I knew you were going to say that. At, at least, though, at least they did. Like, once I got him there, they were trying to right. remove it. They were trying to move it. And I imagine what, what I'm hoping is probably what it was, is that Gordon was there and Gordon was like, leave it on him, leave it. And Gordon was kind of like, you keep it on. My, my thing is like, Gordon couldn't have been the one that found him first, like mm -hmm. in, in that particular situation. He was on the ground unconscious. No random passerby mm, decided to look and see who it was. Yeah. Nobody, nobody. Because in yeah, every re edition of the character, when people try that, it's either like electrified mm -hmm. or he'll like wake up I was and grab somebody's for that hand. Moment. I was right. waiting for like, okay, somebody's going to try to take it and then, oh, they, they get some type of bad feedback. Maybe it's a smoke bomb or something. Yeah. I was waiting for something to happen. Or in the animated yeah. series, he just kind of wakes up and grabs people's hands and shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always kind of do that number. Yeah, no, it, it, that, that's that's fair. I, I'll give you that. But uh, 
I still love it. I it's, still, it's, it's still a movie at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. This is still, uh, uh, in my personal opinion, the this is easily the most fun Batman movie to me. And the only one I can really see myself rewatching regularly. I can watch and it's three like, hours long. That's crazy. Right, exactly. <laughs> <That's exactly. laughs> like, as, as great as Heath Ledger's performance is in The Dark Knight, I'm not about to sit and rewatch that movie. I'm sorry. I Just, don't know if I have to I, 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 I've done it before. It's I'll rewatch Heath Ledger scenes, I'll rewatch that. But Fair the enough. whole movie? Fair enough. way to get to the character of batman because i think this this movie actually focused more on batman in a way that the other films iterations especially they key ones really got the batman. brooding they finally included the brooding because they like, included the brooding and the yeah actual yeah yeah edward cullen batman just makes sense it just it, it really it does I mean, people were hating on it so much back in the day. It's like you have to understand like, that how look at how reasonable <laughs> this, like, is. this, this is. This pretty is much is. Like, what are you talking about natural progression from being a bad person to being the Batman. Right, right. right. I mean, it's logical. Mm. You got, it's wildly logical. Wildly right. Logical. To get into um, that, I um, I thought it was great. Like they showed that Batman was a little unhinged, and you saw it in certain scenes. Like the biggest scene was the first scene where they went through the first crime scene. And he's like looking at cops and he's just like, like it looks like his face is blank and he's not there, but he's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's looking past people into like a round shit and not even phased by what people are saying and the way people are looking at him. And he only breaks that immersion when like he sees the one kid that uh, was the yeah. son of the mayor. Mm-hmm. And he like has like, I guess a PTSD flashback or like, it, like he's so gone in his head and he is the Batman. He's we talked about it earlier in which like, yeah. This movie focuses on him becoming Batman and navigating that. And Bruce what? Wayne isn't even a thing yet. Bruce right. Wayne. Yeah. Essentially, it, it opens with him saying, I'm vengeance to him kind of becoming more or less a hero. That's the mm-hmm. difference. It's not just about hurting people, but actually helping people, uh, which I really liked. It's, there's a, there's a, it's, a, it's essentially he, had a, he actually had an arc. Batman, our buddy <laughs> Chuck Pino, hates how Batman has no arcs. Batman actually has an arc in this movie. Yeah. He has to realize, oh, yeah, yeah. I have to. My, I can't just be a symbol of evil or fear i have to do more than that it had to inspire in other ways too we gotta get chuck on to talk about oh before. matter of fact they're loose they're loose canada's episodes will be batman related so we can yeah it's we're, supposed gonna, to be. we're gonna cast out on batman shit for the next month yeah okay, <laughs> right. i wouldn't be I mean, I've been doing it for 70 years we're talking about the Catwoman or selena kyle we can talk about that character as well and also dev's wife so how mm-hmm. did y'all feel about that just in general. Um, hey boo. Um, um, okay, wait, wait. Yo, yo oh, boo first. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, my boo thing. Hey, let me tell you, this is my baby girl, bro. She's dope. Uh, in all seriousness, with this character, I felt as though it was. I talked about it earlier. She didn't seem like cat. Like in the same vein that Batman wasn't Bruce Wayne yet, she wasn't Catwoman yet. She was Selena Kyle and navigating the whole thing. Because again, she talked about she was running this whole score on Falcon the whole time to get this money because she felt like, as someone that has a absent father and abandoned father, I can, can I, I empathize with her in the whole aspect of feeling like you were owed something. And she went out to try to get what she felt like she was owed. So it felt like a child in a woman's body the majority of the movie. And then near the end, once he died and she felt like this weight was alleviated off her, she can go out and like progress as her own person at the end. I feel like that was kind of, kind of so her arc of like being that little girl the whole time. And you saw that, like once they revealed that she was his daughter, I, I looked at those things differently. Like the scene where he has her by the chin. Initially, I thought it was like a real rapey type situation where, oh, she's attractive, he's an old creepy dude. That's what it is. But then when he grabbed her by the chin, she felt like you could see that whole di- uh, dynamic of like him being that father to her and like she seeing the person that she wanted, but she never had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like, but he doesn't actually know that he's his yeah he doesn't so for him it was yeah. rapey but for her right. she looked at him a certain way she's like right this is my daddy this is my father yeah. um and again a lot of that's one thing i love about this movie a lot of things that they show early on you don't get the full grasp mm-hmm. of until it's revealed later on and you go right. like rewatch this movie a second time you'll see things a lot yeah, yeah. i was very very fortunate that i had a father figure in my life um, my whole life I still do he's a great man but right. I, I can only imagine the damage it does to you when someone abandons you, that's the end. Because both Bruce mm-hmm. Wayne and Selena Kyle have abandonment, severe abandonment issues. 
uh, Bruce Wayne's father didn't do it deliberately, but he they abandoned him by dying. And right. obviously, Kyle wasn't wasn't around, uh, and then her mother died, and so it's kind of it it affects you. It, it never ends. Essentially, it, it's something that you have to find a way to deal with. It takes a lot of you know treatment, psychology. Uh, I'm sorry, mm. actual seeing a psychiatrist, that kind of stuff. So it's uh, I'm glad that it was brought up a lot in this movie. Mm. Right. They started to form a little bit of a codependency in a sense. Like you saw, Batman initially was kind of cold to Selena at first, and then the more and more like once he learned that Falcon was her father, they. He's, that empathy started to like grow like you can see like the roots attaching between them and between those two yeah and it started to form sort of a codependency on one another even down to the point to where and that one scene where she called him to come kill that informant that guy that killed uh, her roommate or whatever like mm -hmm. they, they needed each other they were using each other like a crutch mentally yeah. and socially uh for one another so that, yeah. that that relationship seemed a lot more realistic than mm -hmm. any other Batman, Batman and Catwoman relationship ever. I, I, agree. I, I completely agree. Uh, I I know I, I have a, all of us probably have a, a little bit of a soft spot for the Batman Returns, the second Tim Burton movie, and right. it's fun to see Michelle Pfeiffer and Keaton together, but they don't have nearly as much of a connection. It's like it's just they're fun to see popular actors do things. There isn't right. as much of a developed, fleshed out relationship, and Catwoman mm -hmm. goes from being a you know, a, a kind of a traditional kind of a nerdy, uh, nebbish secretary to a super mega level villain like, overnight, literally overnight. And it's like, you know, right. where, did, where, does, where did this character come from? What is right. this? Yeah. yeah so it's, that whole dynamic of Cat like initially I thought the dynamic of Catwoman and Batman was the, mis the mystique, almost kind of like a Black Cat and Spider-Man where it's like, oh, you're attractive, yeah, you're mysterious, I like right. you. This mm -hmm. one, it was more so, yeah, you're mysterious, but I, I feel your pain and I, I right. know how you feel. Right. Mm -hmm. There's actual connection there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one scene with the Batman and Selena that I want to talk about is uh, when the, he sends her into the bar with the contacts on. Mm -hmm. The the connection that they had in that scene was so, so well done. Like how fluently she received the orders from from Bruce and like acted on those like in the club was was was, was fantastic. Like. Yeah. And right. he said, like, look back, look back. And she, you know, she gave the, the little look back. Like, you know, like, she made it look so natural, but she was literally falling orders to the T. I think that was just a, a right. really well done scene. It was a, it was fun to watch them as partners. The first time to see Batman and Catwoman mm -hmm. as partners. I mean, they tried to kind of do something like that in uh, The Dark Knight Rises, but it was like, what is this? It didn't, it didn't, right. it didn't dive. Um, it, was, it was dope to see, like, her being, like, it's we we talked about this a little bit with the costume thing with Batgirl and the whole femininity thing. It was great to see a woman be within her sexual femininity and then also be a, like a contributing thing. It wasn't like she's attractive. That's great. We see that. But she even used her attraction to her advantage sometimes to actually be relevant within mm -hmm. the story. Yeah. Like that whole point in the club where she like He's telling her to look back. She's like, no, I look back. He's going to come over here. I already know what's about to happen. I know what it is. She's mm -hmm. like, all right, I look back. It's like, see, I told you why she's going to come over here. Like, she's like very much so a woman mm -hmm. doing shit, not a woman doing women shit. She's a character. Yeah. Like, yeah. A woman being a significant part of that. I, I love that. I adored that. But she, she's using all of the, all of the things that are provided to her to get what she wants, which is understandable. If any of us gender not a, you know excluded would do the same thing. She right. wears the wig, she makes sure she looks pretty, she wears like the very the the kind of the, the bustier, all that stuff deliberately knowing that would get her through mm -hmm. certain doors to, to get to a crime boss and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also you see her when she's not working, how she how she dresses, how she's just more regular person, how she is with Batman is what he's trying to do about her. She's a full well rounded character, not just a exploitive sex object uh, um, right so it's yeah I, I, which I is the kind of vibe i got kind of got from the not almost like michelle pfeiffer the blonde from batman returns that cat woman with the yes yeah, yeah. yeah. okay that's yeah. what it, yeah mm -hmm. that one just kind of felt weird to me it was like yeah she's the angry woman in the leather cat suit and she's really mm -hmm. only around to be sex appeal and to like try to smash batman or mm -hmm. distract yeah. him um yeah. And my, that's, again, if I'm wrong, y'all let me know in the comments, but that's how the way I felt about that movie. I loved it, thought she was cool, yeah. but it didn't feel like she was relevant to the story at all. Right, she was she was an ornament to the story, not necessarily a, a central yeah. piece to it. Mm -hmm. 
that's how this well this like she was central like to the plot of the entire movie like she was very important to the story and it it was in a different way too because part of what this is showing with with her friend uh, we haven't talked about annika her friend who kind of brings her into the story is to show the ramifications what happens when gangsters and crime lords the people that it affects it's not Mm -hmm. because the the, big part of the story is how we always see things from batman's point of view and your batman isn't uh despite all his trauma he's still a multi-millionaire that lives outside of the city Mm-hmm. This shows how it affects the real people that are inside this crime-ridden area. The orphans that are fucked up by it, including the Riddler, the people that, that are in the wake of these gangsters like Catwoman, uh, Selena Kyle. The real people do get really, you know, have to deal with a lot because of these these people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like how it showed that Batman or Bruce Wayne himself wasn't as aware of these things either. So it's a, uh, right. it, so it's a. Uh, I'm glad that she was an integral part of the story as far as seeing it on the ground level. What it's like to be in this world. Mm. It's supposed to be in an ivory tower outside of it. Modern Mark Productions. All right. I will say I feel like that one word describes this entire movie and wraps it up in a perfect bow is perspective. Yeah. Even down to the Riddler, like the whole point of him doing all this shit was so that people in Gotham could see his perspective of being this orphan, being promised all this stuff, and then being ignored and shunned for the rest of your life. Yeah. perspective is like the number one thing and that's I, I love this movie for that it had a common theme also there were no wasted characters i feel like even the smaller characters like the bouncers even now everybody had their part to play the in this and nobody mm. nobody came in and was thrown away everybody mm-hmm. played a part all right yeah i agree i so, agree the, the twins you, how many times you see the twins right <laughs> yeah at least three they were, they were fun i don't i don't know if they were tootle d and tootle dumb uh, but that. i know that the penguin obviously has every iteration he has twins that work for him all right. All right. we're talking about perspective mm-hmm. I like how so many things portrayed Batman so for one thing was his car the scene where his car because there's, there's an introduction for Batman as he's walking in the rain slowly his mm-hmm. car when they introduce, introduce his car it literally sounds like a banshee in a dragon screaming mm-hmm. angrily mm-hmm. and I love this because it's, it's, it's reflecting his overwhelming anger just bursting at the seams essentially the right. car actually reflects Batman mm-hmm. um, in a way and um, so I, I just want to bring that up as far as perspective. Even his car has a perspective of him. And lots of the directing, the shots were, were done from almost like a first person point of view. When he's flying down, you see him like flying. It's really scary. When he's driving, you see it first person as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when the penguin gets hit by Batman on the street during that chase, you're inside the car that's tumbling. So in the, the, the actual perspective, of it, if you're being afraid and terrified from that, the atmosphere is mm. portraying Gotham's perspective of being like a city of this this bursting the scenes of this actual despair and darkness and it, it's it's all these things are there. So I wanted to bring that up real quick. Yeah, and I, I want to bring two things too before we get to the critiques. Uh, one, that that chase scene uh, where he's on the uh, in the Batmobile on the highway mm. chasing down Penguin. I feel like that was one of the best scenes in the entire movie. Like that was. That was beautifully done, especially okay. at the end when he's out of the car and you see the flames behind him and everything with the cape mm-hmm. flying. Like that was some cinematically just astonishing. They they I, killed that. I can't get over it. I, can't um, get over it. I also really expect I respected like kind of like the duality they set up with with uh, Batman, like you know how the scenes with him and Gordon were almost like in the uh, uh, opposite to uh, the scenes with him and Catwoman. Like, you know, this is like the good side versus the bad side, the angel versus the devil type thing mm-hmm. where uh, they show like the different spectrum of uh, Batman's morality as a whole. Uh, I, I thoroughly appreciated that uh, that that little pairing there. But, yeah. Oh yeah, the critiques, yeah. you can get to that. Yeah. Um, but, and, 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 just yeah. to piggyback on what you said, oh, I love how at the end, I don't know definitively if Batman would have left Gotham to go off with Catwoman, but I like how it's when it's presented to him right on cue, the bat signal goes up and he looks over at it and she's like, yeah, you can't, you're never going to, you can't. You're spoken for. You right. spoken for. She said the word you spoke right. for. Great line. And, and without saying anything and she just leaves. But then again, like they was talking about how when, when they're leaving, you can see the actual a pain or something or the hurt when Batman has to watch his, the first love of his life essentially right off from him. And the music, mm-hmm. the music is perfect as it watches it too. It's like yeah, actually, he actually does. For the first time, he's dealing with the idea that this job does come at a cost. It's not just physical pain, but it's also there is emotional pain too. So, All right. There's not a lot. I don't have a lot. Most of this is really nitpicking in the movie. Uh, for me, I would have loved to see more stealth Batman. I felt as though this Batman was very like 
I'm announcing my presence. I'm kind of pulling up, um, especially with the club scene. I, I, what I thought was going to happen at that last club scene when he's going to get Falcone and save him from Catwoman, I'm thinking, all right, he's about to go full stealth mode and take all these guys out, no effort. Even then, it kind of just felt like he was on a war path. He, they had it to an extent where he's in the top of the elevator, but even then, it wasn't a lot of stealth in this, which, again, you can kind of say that'll come in a later movie. They didn't, like, he's not really trained in this, which they say, because they say Alfred tied him on a fight here. So the League of Shadows is like, he never took that six year journey around the world yet to learn training and to learn escapism and all that stuff. This is just raw him just learning hand to hand shit he's learned from Alfred. So maybe that'll come later. I don't know, but I would love to see more of stealth and more of the actual Dark Knight versus just, I'm gonna walk out so you can all see me and then I'm gonna run up and smack the fuck out of you on some seafood shit. My, my, the, some of the ones that y'all brought up are, I, I think about too, as far as him just walking through bullets, walking in, sorry, walking into bullets, uh, isn't Batman style all the time. And it, yeah, it's, it's weird that they didn't take the mask off. They had opportunity to do it. They never did that. A little odd as well. The, uh, I'm trying to think of a, I think a bigger overlying, like, uh, it would have been cool to see more actual stealth like him doing, like Dev was saying, or more gadgets. One thing that was funny was I noticed this was the very first Batman movie that he didn't actually throw a batarang. Mm-hmm. He has one on his chest, which is cool, but he never throws it. He uses it to cut things twice. Um, so, but it's not really a negative, but it's just something that, that I had thought of. Which, real um, quick on that, it was funny because I think that's an homage from the Batman Beyond stuff where the mm-hmm. logo was a batarang, but he threw it in that. But about that, he yeah. does. I I got out of the majority of my my uh, you know nitpicks that it was like I mean Batman should have died like forty seven times and he survived the whole movie. I mean just throwing that out there. Um, I don't know how he like after that fall of after cutting the wire, before, you know before like you know like. That, from that height, after everything that has happened to him at that point, how do you stand back up in that armor in that water? Like he's bad. That's a feat in itself, right it's there. It's like yeah. he got shot by everything. What did he? What did he pop that adrenaline though? Hmm? Did he pop the adrenaline before he fell into the water though? Yeah, yeah. he did. He so had yeah, to. that could be part of it. He he's still, he's still, he's still, he's still juiced. He's still juiced yeah. up. And then um, I'm a little bit worried about how the the tone of this is going to go going forward because like where they're setting it up it's like you know batman is the 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 savior of this city like he's very friendly with the police he's very friendly with the the people like he's very well accepted mm-hmm. and part of the thing that made batman batman is the fact that he was the like you know he he wasn't like what the police wanted like he was he was the, he's the dark knight like he's not what you want he's what you need so I'm, I'm a little bit worried about how they do handle that going forward, but I won't really count that as a knock against them. My only counter to that would be that the one addition that, they, I feel like the initial rendition of the character that made everybody fall in love with him in the animated series, he was friends with Commissioner Gordon at that point. Like he had the bad signal of, he was at crime scenes, solving crimes, and people fell in love with him at that point. But uh, even with that though, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying, Deb, but that was still Gordon. Gordon and him were good, and the other mm-hmm. cops, because Gordon was the top dog, he, he he gave the orders. They they would leave him alone. Mm-hmm. Bullock clearly still hated him. Um, Montoya didn't know what to think of him, but the cops pretty much just stayed away from him. They didn't right. almost like a wild dog. You kind of just like you knew just to keep your distance more so than they were like accepting him and welcoming him in to have parties and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you're saying, Otis, it's a it's a very valid point. I thought about that too. I think what'll happen is probably. Either something will happen to kind of ch- change the public opinion on Batman in some way, or he'll still be. People will still won't. They'll say, "Well, if he's our hero, why doesn't he present himself more often? What's he doing?" Or he'll still be a vigilante in some sense. So it won't be completely like open arms, but it's a valid point. It seemed like he was very much more like hands on with people. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I kind of like the idea that one of my favorite scenes was literally um, after he puts the person he's carrying into the the gurney of sorts mm-hmm. uh, and she's like holding on to him like in, in shock more or less and he just like slowly like is holding her hand and lets her go kind of the idea of like if you were as I, I wasn't at 9-11 but I know there are plenty of times where there's plenty of footage of people that were being um, carried out by uh, cops and firemen did the exact same thing where you're just like I'm still 
terrified. I need someone to hold on to. Mm-hmm. So it's I, 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 it's fun to see him actually as a definitive hero, but I think that we'll have to find a way to get him much more into the shadows again. Right. Yeah, you're right. The last thing I want to end this video on is the quick discussion on the, the big elephant in the room in regards to the Joker being ran back for the infinite amounts of time that they've done this um, with a different actor at this point in time too. So I don't really know how to feel about it. Mm-hmm. I, like I said, in the live stream, I preferred for them to go into the Rose Gallery a little deeper and find like the Calendar Man, the Mad Hatter, uh, somebody that isn't that. Face. Even then, like somebody, those Maybe characters not. specifically, you can do like a similar type of deal with the Riddler where he can still solve crime because these guys are, Jervis Tex is really using, um, Technology to find a point. He's kind of uh, crazy. Calendar Man's kind of like the Riddler in a sense, where he's using the days, the months, the year to solve his, uh, commit his crimes or whatever. There, there is there is similar things you could have done there in similar tone. Now with the Joker, yeah. there's like now there's expectation because you have the Heath Ledger and Walking Phoenix thing hovering over your head, and it's I, I don't know. I feel like there's something that to be difficult. I, I don't think he's going to show up in the second film, at least not as the main baddie. Yeah, and I'm glad they didn't actually you don't actually see his face. Mm-hmm. You hear his laugh, and actually his voice was fine. It actually sounded very much like a hard New Yorker. It's like a part of his face. Okay. You show, like a, you show like a part of him in the cell, like the yeah. Light. You see part of his, you see part of, you don't yeah. see the finish. You saw a little bit like a chemical burn on his face. Yeah, yeah chemical burns, big ass mouth, uh, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't like they were trying to really focus on it too much. I thought, I thought at first when we started talking, it was a calendar man because calendar man isn't obviously in Arkham Two. Mm-hmm. He has all his numbers there, but it wasn't him. Uh, I'm right there with you, Dev. I don't want them to bring. We've gotten so much Joker. We keep getting Joker. Mm-hmm. We don't need to have him back again, and we don't need to have it another version that could be. It's almost you're setting yourself up for defeat because to try and follow up with Joaquin or um, Heath is going to fall short. This is likely to. So let's All right. do other stuff. I thought that caught lightning in a bottle with Joaquin, and that's mostly because he wasn't related to. Like it didn't involve the Batman. It was a mm-hmm. character insight on him. So yeah, that's, it's going to be tough. I'm terrified of that. Well, is there any other thoughts, any clothing remarks about the movie? Before you got to rate it. it. You got to rate it. Oh, I forgot about the rate. I always forget about the ratings. Uh, we'll start left to right. So, oh, that's what you got. Uh, it's an eight and a half to me. This is this is this is a really good movie. Um, the the biggest thing that takes away for it from me is the fact that it did feel long. Like a lot happened. A great a lot of great events happened. They this felt long. They got to find a way to kind of streamline that for future movies for me. Right. In, in all fairness, though, too, Otis did. You came off of like what time did you go see this movie? Eleven p.m. Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you went to a, at eleven p.m. after doing a, like a live stream for like a couple hours of the game. Yeah. So you you went in there already uh, on fumes. Already. I think I went and saw that six o'clock. I think you saw it like seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, I saw it eight, so we eight, saw it relatively early. I was like awake the whole time, so I, yeah, was, I was definitely. I, I, I thought already like I had gotten ice cream and eaten food before, so I was already like amped up and like a little voice sitting waiting to see it. Yeah, um, yeah. So it didn't seem like it was. I could tell it was long, but I yeah. didn't feel like it ran over. That was just me personally, though. Um, yeah, but I, I know where I was coming from. I know where I was right. coming from. I right. I enjoyed it, but it and it was long, but I I, I still yeah I get it. Yeah. So for me, I'm giving it a nine out of ten. They're like the so I love to see more. If I would have saw the stealth stuff, I'd give it a ten. That would have, if as a Batman fan, that's the one thing that was missing for me was the stealth combat that I wanted to see from Batman and him utilizing his gadgets more to mm-hmm. put fear into people, which he put fear into people, but not through the stealth stuff. Um, yeah. Outside of that, per, it was like the almost damn near the perfect Batman movie for me yeah. as a Batman fan. So now I understand. Yeah, if you use like his smoke pellets to do some stuff, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I'm I am um, actually because so. The, one of the most iconic scenes or things that Batman does is he breaks into like a skylight into a club or whatnot and he gets a drop on people. They mm-hmm. actually had that in this movie mm-hmm. with the snipers. He the, the windows break, he drops mm-hmm. in there on down on top of him. It's like that's that's fucking Batman. Um I, I I hate to do this, but I gotta go ten out of ten. I have to go ten. It, it is mainly because I'm str- I'm struggling to think about things that I didn't like about. It. I know the whole bulletproof right. armor and the mask. That's that's fine. I get it. I still loved it, and it's my, it's my own personal thing. I would give it a ten. The, the other thing too is that the, the things that were missing from the Nolan stuff for me weren't missing here. In Nolan's world, I love Hans Zimmer, but his score for those movies just didn't work. It was like it almost seemed jolly or weird at times. I was it wasn't immersed with it. With this movie, 
I've been listening to the soundtrack nonstop since I got home from the movie. And in the movie, it kept you engaged the entire time. I loved how Batman, his persona, he was larger than life. As he, as he, crept, as he walked in and the suit, those boots made a sound. You actually knew he was around all the time. Mm -hmm. I love the buddy cop angle with him and Gordon. I can't deny that. So for that, I just have to go, I have to go full top. Yeah. Those, those boots made me feel like the, it was really reminiscent of that Darth Vader scene at the end of the, uh, the rogue, whatever way he's walking through the smoke and his fucking shit up. That was some Darth Vader shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, that's my last point. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been a great movie. Like this is probably one of the better, I think honestly, this may be the highest rated movie that we cover this year. It's my, it's my bet. Maybe Multiverse of Madness is better. We'll see. Um, but it was great. I'm I'm really happy we saw this. We all have been itching to do this review since we saw it. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed it, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Remember to like, share, subscribe to the video. Um, we have more dope shit coming for you guys. I'm, uh, coming pretty soon. And this has been another episode of the Then and Out podcast. And thank you guys for joining for tuning in. That's what brooding looks like, Christian Bill. That's what brooding looks like. <laughs>